comment tu veux faire. Morning and welcome to Emmanuel Church on the Hill on this feast of Pentecost. The liturgy is as found in your bulletin or as beginning on page 77 in the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia! Christ is risen! The Lord is risen indeed! Alleluia! You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Glory Father, to the Father God, and to the Son, and to the, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah, the spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. Come, let us adore him. Hallelujah. Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord, the Lord with, with gladness. Come into Come God's before. presence with the Son. Know this, the Lord, the Lord is God. God. The one who made us and to whom we belong. We are God's people, the sheep of God's pasture. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving. Go into these courts with praise. Give thanks to God and call upon the name of the Lord. For the Lord is good, whose steadfast love is everlasting, and whose faithfulness endures from age to Let's say this psalm by whole verse. I will begin. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is a great and wide sea with its living things too many to number. Creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, 
and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This is a reading from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared before them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Llegando el día de Pentecoste, estaban todos reunidos en un solo lugar. Y su den del cielo un brillo como el coup de vent violent es venido. Y él ha rompido toda la misión y ellos han estado así. Et apabru erant ilis dispertite linguae tanquam, ignis sedeque supra singulos eorum. Se llenaron todos de Espíritu Santo y empezaron a hablar en otras lenguas, según el Espíritu les concedía manifestarse. On ne de hede donet samlades en dormeng menifor, fevonade ficte do hera sine egnes frotalas. Y se Izumialis i divilis, gavariam Iesus aboiu, si gavariasie, ni se li galilianie? Und nun hören wir sie und unsere Muttersprache reden. Parthiaid, ac Mediaid, ac Amelmitiaid, a Trigolian Mesopotamia, a Judea, a Chappadocia, Pontus ac Asia. Nime Phrygia, na Pamathilia, Nime Egypt, na kukulibia di Sirene inso, nandio bia sina Rom bia, mandi ju, mandi ne sons on di ju. Paisi e Arabi, li sentiamo parlare nelle nostre lingue le marvigliose opera di Dio. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamitites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. 
In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together, Canticle, cue, a song of Christ's goodness, the words of which are attributed to St. Anselm of Canterbury. Jesus, as a mother, you gather your people to you. You are gentle with us as a mother with her children. Often you weep over our sins and cry. Tenderly you draw us from hatred and judgment. You comfort us in sorrow, bind up our wounds. Sickness, you nurse us, and with pure milk you feed us. Jesus, by your dying, we are born to new life. By your anguish, anguish and labor, we come forth in joy. Despair turns to hope through your sweet goodness. Through your gentleness, we find comfort in fear. Your warmth gives life to the dead. Your touch makes sinners righteous. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, heal us. In your love and tenderness, remake us. In your compassion, bring grace and forgiveness. For the beauty of heaven, may your love prepare us. A reading from Corinthians 1, chapter 12. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activizes all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, all of these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit, we're all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one Spirit. Let's say together the glory. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, the glory of God the Father.
This is a reading from John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of many, they are forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Here ends the lesson. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable unto thee, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. The message of Pentecost is all about God bringing people together, bringing them together across languages, and cultures, and races, so that new community could be formed, so that all could be heard and could understand, all could hear the message of God's saving love, and all could find a home in the community. It undoes the story of the Tower of Babel from the Old Testament. You may remember that story when driven by ego and hubris, people said, let us build a tower right to God, in essence, so that we could be like God. So God broke down communication between them, which meant that community broke down, which meant that the tower stopped which meant the community disintegrated. Pentecost is the reversal of all of that. When people who were in Jerusalem from all over the then known world heard the message of the gospel, each in their own language. This is why we sometimes call Pentecost the birthday of the church, the formation of this new community in the spirit. Our lesson says that tongues as a flame darted over the people. That's why we wear red on this day. It celebrates the arrival of the Holy Spirit and all the gifts that came with it. There are many names for the Holy Spirit, the Counselor, the Advocate, and other attributes, the Spirit who gives us strength and inspiration, perseverance and guidance, who surrounds us in God's love. St. Paul in Galatians lists some of the fruits of the Spirit, those being love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So all that we celebrate on this Pentecost, all that we celebrate today is true every year and always. But this message is harder to hear today, as so much has worked not to bring us together, but to pull us apart. We have to, of course, name the coronavirus. In our own country this week, we passed the grim anniversary of 100,000 people who have now died. This is not to mention, of course, all those others who have suffered or are suffering, those in mourning, those who have suffered economically, those whose lives have been disrupted. All of this has served to drive us apart, to separate us as we've had to do, almost in hiding, as we've had to approach the other, any other outside our families with fear as potential sources of contagion as have they approached us. And just as we were starting to come out of the cocoons of our isolation and lockdown, just as we were starting to peek out and maybe stretch and imagine the broader world, 
Racism and hatred have reared their ugly heads yet again in our land with the families. That video from Minneapolis, that horrible video, I've watched several times and I almost cannot get through it. It is sickening, it is disturbing. And it has been met with near universal condemnation that Mr. George Floyd unjustly lost his life, that he was killed. It looked almost as if that officer kneeling on his neck was killing a mosquito that had gotten into his bedroom. Not that he was dealing with a human being. What was that police officer thinking? Some stories have emerged that Mr. Floyd and the police officer might actually have known each other as they apparently worked together on the side in a nightclub. We will see. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. It's ugly regardless. And then there are all the images of peaceful protesters righteously demanding better that our country live up to its vision. People exercising their constitutional rights demanding healing in our society. But then back to hatred again. The images of the rioters, the looters, those bent on destruction, destroying so much so many have worked for across our land. We need the message of Pentecost today, my brothers and sisters. We need translators and translations just like on the day of Pentecost so that we can each hear in our own language and experience the good news of the gospel. What are we to do? What can we do? Where do we turn? I'm afraid there are no easy answers or remedies. The way ahead is full of work and struggle. But I'm convinced the answer is right within our tradition. If we will study it and mine it for all that it's worth and try to live from it. Confess when we fall short of it again and always we begin again. Two essential points from that tradition speak to us today. The first is the core bedrock element of our belief that we are all made in the image and likeness of God. All of humanity. And secondly, as Christians, the equally core bedrock element of our tradition is the incarnation, that God became one of us, that God wore our skin, all human skin, not just white skin or black skin or brown skin or Asian or Native American skin, but human sin. We all fall short of remembering these basic truths, even from our tradition. I think of that element in the baptismal covenant in the Episcopal Church, that covenant we repeat at every baptism, which should bring us all up short. And that is when we affirm that we will, with God's help, respect the dignity of every human being. The continual question before us is how can we be agents of that real, God-filled, life-giving community? How can we be agents of God's grace, God's Holy Spirit working within and between and among us? Not just because it feels right, but because it's part of God's dream for the world and part of our witness. Now, this is when I wish we were together today, when I so wish that I weren't staring just into this little camera, because part of what makes this 
Even harder is that we cannot be together as we normally are. To hug, to share the peace, to cry with each other, to pray together, to receive the sacrament together, to be renewed and to go out these doors and those doors into the world to try to live this story again. God's dream and how we're called to be part of it. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. often spoke of God's vision for the community as the beloved community. And as you no doubt know, he worked tirelessly for change, not constituted upon violence. He said, quote, the aftermath of nonviolence is the creation of the beloved community while the aftermath of violence is tragic bitterness. How many this morning are feeling that tragic bitterness whose businesses have been destroyed, whose cars have been burned? What would Dr. King say to all of us today? What are we to do? How can we be agents of translation and to be translators? Again, a quote from Dr. King. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Well, my brothers and sisters, that brings me right back to the fire of Pentecost. The light-giving power of Pentecost the loving, powerful, life-giving fire of the Holy Spirit is what we celebrate today. And not only that, what we cling to today. We've got a lot of work to do and our local community and dare I say our world needs our witness, fallible as it is, by God's help. God bless you all. Let us join now in singing hymn 511, Holy Spirit Ever Living. And I remind you, uh, please to mute your microphone unless you want to offer us all a solo. Hymn 511, Holy Spirit Ever Living.
Let's, uh, let us confess our faith together as we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again in accordance. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the ways of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, on this day, you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Prayers of the people. Please offer your prayers of gratitude and concern in the silence following each petition. Let us begin by giving thanks for all the blessings of this life, a few of which we now name before God. Lord, in your mercy, here. God of love, we pray for your church, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Susan and Jennifer, our bishops, for all lay and ordained ministers, and for all who seek you in the community of the faithful. Equip us with compassion and love 
to carry out your work of reconciliation in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of freedom, we pray for our nation and all the nations of the world, for peace and unity across barriers of language, color, and creed, and for our elected and appointed leaders, especially Donald, our president, Ralph, our governor, and Justin, our mayor, that they would serve the common good, inspire all people with courage to speak out against hatred and to resist evil actively, unite the human family in bonds of love. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of peace, we pray for this community, for our local leaders, for our schools and markets, for our neighborhoods and workplaces. Kindle in every heart a desire for equality, respect, and opportunity for all. Give us courage to strive for justice and peace among all people beginning here at home. Lord, in your mercy. God of mercy, we pray for all in any kind of need or trouble, for those whose lives are closely linked with ours and those connected to us as part of the human family, for refugees and prisoners, for the sick and suffering, the lonely and despairing, for those facing violence, for all held down by prejudice or injustice. Awaken in us compassion and humility of spirit as we seek and serve Christ in all persons. We pray for all those working for racial healing in our country following the death of George Floyd and for his family. We also pray for police officers and National Guardsmen putting themselves in harm's way to protect people and property and to restore order. God, help us all. Lord, in your mercy. Here. Let us remember before God all those who have been commended to our parish prayer list. Nancy, Dick, Mike, Lucy, Ted, Catherine, Diane, Bruce, Aggie, Natalie, Joan, Anne, Raven, and Tony, and those others known to us to be in need of healing, whom we now name. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. God of grace, we pray for those who have died, for the faithful in every generation who have worked for justice, for prophets who called us to racial reconciliation, for martyrs who died because of hatred, and for all the communion of saints. We remember especially this week, Army First Lieutenant Traverius Bowman, George Floyd, Airman First Class Darius Gilmer, Army PFC Brandon Rosencrantz, Reese Vogel. Make us faithful to your call to proclaim your good news by word and example, and bring us all at last into the glorious company of the saints in light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Throughout the pandemic, we have prayed together the following prayer. I offer it today once again. In this time of global pandemic, oh God, we hold before you our fear, our confusion, our sense of disruption, our anger, and our hope. 
We pray for all those who are suffering from the coronavirus, for those who have died, for those currently ill, for those recovering, for those in mourning. We pray for doctors and nurses, therapists and technicians, and all support staff. We pray for researchers and public health officials across the nations, for those suffering economically due to unemployment, and for students whose studies have been disrupted. We pray for those most vulnerable to this disease now, O oh God, and for all efforts to protect and shield them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, holy God. Breathe your spirit over us and all the earth as you did on the day of Pentecost. That barriers would crumble and divisions cease. Make us more fully your co-healers of the broken world. Unite us with all people in bonds of love that the whole earth and all its peoples may be at peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit the honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised to your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Once again, a warm welcome to all of you, whether you're watching this live stream or whether you will be watching this recording afterwards. Welcome to this service from Emmanuel Church on the Hill. I can see some of you are wearing red in celebration of Pentecost, and I thank you for that. I thank all of our talented readers today who read in that host of languages I thank our other readers and our intercessor, all who worked today to offer this service to God's glory and to the upbuilding of God's people. I thank John Bednar and Sandra Graham, Brooke Roberts, so many others in our communications group who are working to make this service possible, broadcasting today from two chapels and from, for Jane Tavernier, who's playing the organ today. Wonderful to honor the work of you all. I'm also happy today to, to name that our Thursday morning Bible study has finished our study of Paul's letter to Philippians, and that group decided they want more. They want to keep going. We have found, surprisingly, that virtual format actually works fairly well for a Bible study. We had about 20 people on Thursday. So charging ahead, we're now going to begin reading the Acts of the Apostles. We'll begin reading that this Thursday morning. We begin at 10.30. And also, I wonder if there are others out there who would like to be part of a Bible study but cannot do it during the workday, who would be interested in an evening Bible study beginning 
perhaps around 6 p.m. If so, would you please let me know and let's see what we can get scheduled together. I am very happy today to introduce and to welcome, although we'll welcome in more in just a moment, a good friend of mine, John Lent from the American Friends of the Episcopal Diocese of Jerusalem. They are one of our outreach partners and we have worked with them for many years. John will be speaking at our forum later today. I wonder if he's available now. John, would you like to say just a couple of words about your topic before we begin? Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, good morning. It's wonderful to be back with you. Uh, and thank you, Randy. Uh, I'm going to be speaking about the ministries in the Holy Land that you so generously support and have supported for years. Um, and I'm going to give you an update. I, I was in the Holy Land in the Diocese of Jerusalem in uh, February and March. Uh, got out just before they closed the airport. And uh, so I'll give you an update on what's going on there in terms of the pandemic. And, uh, and also speak to you about um, Christian witness, uh, which I think is very apt for the Pentecost uh, Sunday. So I'm delighted to be here with all of you. Thank you, John. We look forward. So now let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.